there say amen. Amen. It says, and I'm reading King James translation. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. I want to talk on this topic this morning. The designated driver. The designated driver. They gave him wine with myrrh, but he didn't drink. The designated driver. text tells us that when they brought Jesus to the place to be crucified that they attempted to give him wine mixed with myrrh they attempted to give him a drink, but he refused it. They attempted to give him myrrh, but he refused it. In this study or in the field of anesthesiology, an anesthetic works on a portion of the brain that are called GABA receptors. Anesthesia works on this portion of the brain the GABA receptors that deals with forgetting an awareness that there was any pain. The anesthesia is an alleviation of anxiety and awareness and that the GABA receptors are affected by this drug where it deadens the GABA receptors and thus any pain inflicted upon your body is totally forgotten. Anybody ever been in surgery? and been under anesthesia, you go to sleep and you wake up. Not knowing that a knife has cut your body. Not knowing that a probe has been in your heart. The GABA receptors have been deadened. And thus, there is no awareness of what has just happened, nor is there any anxiety associated with what has just happened. Have you ever gone into surgery and you were nervous? And when they put the mask over your nose, at that point, everything was gone. You just woke up, and it was all over. Such is an anesthesia. It works in the 
GABA receptors of your brain that causes you to not to know that there was pain. But then on the other side, there's what's called analgesics. The analgesics work on what's called the mu receptors. The mu receptors, when blocked or deadened, it alleviates and eliminates pain, but while you are still awake. The Bible says that they gave Jesus wine mixed with myrrh. I started off Googling my research on anesthesia and analgesics, but then in the midst of my research, I stopped and I went to my contacts and I called two of the most notable anesthesiologists in our country by the name of Jed and Jess. And in my conversation with Jed and Jess, as we were going through this message and shouting at the metaphor, Jed and Jess explained to me, Jed says, Unc, he says, the anesthesia will work on the GABA receptors, but what we do as anesthesiologists, that we give the patient analgesics and anesthesia. And I looked at the text, Holly. What they offered Jesus was the wine, which was an analgesic. It numbed the pain. But they also mixed it with an anesthesia called myrrh that would have allowed Jesus to forget the pain. Oh, I wish I had somebody with me. Jed said, and Jed said that Unc, had he taken it, then he would not have been able to fulfill the will of his father. And I said, preach, yes. <laughs> the reality is, is that in the text, Holly, they wanted Jesus to be numbed of pain, B, and they also wanted him to forget the pain so that there would be no awareness that he had suffered. I wish y'all were with me. You see, we have become a society that have become impervious to pain. Lord have mercy. Y'all ain't got me yet. We're looking for anesthetics. We don't want to remember the pain we're looking for analgesics. We want the pain numbed. But in the text here, Jesus said, I'm a designated driver. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So I can't get high. I can't get drunk. Y'all praying with me yet? See, we become insensitive we become impervious to pain as I said and we are looking for all sorts of means and methods so that we don't have to feel the inevitable can I tell y'all something some things are meant to be felt Lord have mercy some things are meant to go through some things are meant for you to feel what you're going through so that you can praise God when you get out of it. Oh, I wish I had somebody. We are looking for all sorts of methods. And V, I'm not knocking the industry 
But we got to understand that there are sometimes, Lord have mercy, you got to go through that. Lord have mercy. And, and see, it's not just the substance that we run to. Lord have mercy. We run to a lot of different elements to help us to not feel the pain. Lord have mercy. Some of us just lie. Lord Jesus, y'all ain't Y'all ain't feeling it yet. Some of us just talk too much. Some, some of us just fool ourselves and go into a delusional state of unbelief. Are y'all praying with me today, church? Yeah, a lot of us have gone through some traumatic pain. Come on, talk to me, church. And you have developed your own anesthesia. Your body has spoken to your own GABA receptors and say don't feel this anymore. As a matter of fact forget it ever happened. Lord are y'all with me church uh, and as a result of that uh, yeah your GABA receptors may have caused you to not be aware but your attitude reflect that you've been through it. Y'all still with me? Y'all have mercy. Your demeanor still says You've been through something, but you have delusionized yourself. You have, Lord Jesus happened here. You have messed with your own GABA receptors to the point where you don't even remember the trauma anymore. I, see, I know it's getting tight up in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not only that, uh, we daily go to our analgesics. Yeah, something to numb the pain. Something to get rid of the pain. When we have tricked our GABA receptors into believing that it didn't happen. I'm preaching up in here. Y'all better come on with me. Yeah, yeah, you trick yourself into believing that it didn't happen. You lied to yourself. You created this delusional character this avatar of yourself this delusional caricature of yourself and you're presenting that to the world but deep down inside of you there's something in your GABA and your mu receptors that's prohibiting you from going on I wish y'all were praying with me today watch this church uh, yeah, we, 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 we don't like pain. We don't like to go through stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As humans, we found all sorts of ways to block it out like it never happened. Are y'all with me? And not just, again, not just substance, uh, but all sorts of ways. But, 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 but we rely on these entities to get us through the day. We call them coping mechanisms oh lord jesus y'all ain't praying with me yet pastor you gotta just forgive me i i gotta cope with this y'all ain't got me lord you gotta just you know my mind lord you know my heart but i gotta cope with some stuff so i need this to cope i need this to get through the day y'all ain't got me yet i i need this so i can just keep smiling and be who I am. We have become impervious to pain and some things God wants us to feel. Oh Lord. Y'all, I wish y'all would me up in here. God wants you to feel that thing. God wants it to hurt so that you can understand deliverance. See, you'll never understand deliverance until you allow it to hurt. Lord Jesus. See, the reason a lot of us are stuck where we are because we don't want to face the pain of what we got to deal with to get to the next level. See, the next level requires going through some pain, going through some stuff. But we'll stay right here and take some stuff, pop some stuff, drink some stuff, 
smoke some stuff, sex some stuff, lie some stuff, career some stuff, family some stuff, everything we'll put in front of God to stop God from doing what he want to do in us. Y'all praying with me, church? Let me tell y'all something about Jesus. See, the Bible says that, that Jesus, Lord have mercy, uh, Isaiah says in 6 and 8, he says, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. See, Jesus, while he was at his throne, David, he measured the length of glory to hell. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And Jesus measured how far he had to go down to save us. He measured the pain. He measured the suffering. And Jesus knew that from his throne that he had to go all the way down to a sinner like me in order to save the world. I, I, see, watch this. See, see, see. In, in measuring, Jesus measured you. Lord have mercy. In measuring, he measured the depths of your sins and knew that in order for him to save, he had to go all the way down to the depths of sin. See, it, what I'm saying here is that Jesus knew that he was going to have to suffer. And in his measurement from his throne and glory, in his measurement of the depths uh, and the length that he had to travel in order to redeem us, Jesus knew that there was nothing that could be missed in the process. Are y'all praying with me, church? So Jesus knew, Lord have mercy, that there could be nothing that would affect his GABA receptors. Lord have mercy. He knew that there could be nothing that would affect his immune perceptors. Jesus, Lord have mercy up in here. See, 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 you got to see something. See, see, it's not that, uh, that Jesus didn't drink. And this is for the mature Christians. See, Je see, Jesus sat and he ate with sinners and publicans. He was wrongfully accused of being a dibbler of wine and a drunk. Are y'all with me? You got to know the Jesus of the Bible. See, Jesus, Lord have mercy, had no ties on him. He understood how to control everything. As a matter of fact, he made wine. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Y'all ain't got me yet. As a matter of fact, Jesus, yeah, yeah, he, he had a vineyard. He made wine. Y'all with me? He drank wine. Y'all, come on with two of Christian. I'm trying to help y'all out up in here. And see, so it is not that in him turning down the wine and the myrrh was some bravado act where Jesus was saying, I'm superhuman and I don't need this. As a matter of fact, I'm ready for pain. Come on, pain. That's not what the text is saying. That was another reason why Jesus had to stay aware. Are y'all praying with me, church? Yeah, Hebrews 10 and 6, Holly is one of our favorite scriptures. We talk about it all the time. Holly says, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he says, sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and offering of sin thou wouldest not, neither had it thou pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said I, Jesus said, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second by which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Watch. Once and for all. Are y'all praying with me to church? See, Jesus knew. He knew that he had come to the world to suffer. Let me put a pen right here and say that Jesus was all God. 
and all man at the same time. But watch this, Deacon Mo. He wasn't Superman. Lord have mercy. He was a natural man. See, he was all God, but he was all man. He wasn't Superman. See, Jesus, Lord have mercy, never worked a miracle to help himself out as a man. I wish y'all were walking with me today. See, Jesus did everything. He felt what? He felt hunger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, Lord have mercy. I'm trying to get us to see something here. Yeah, he felt what it felt like to be a natural man. But he was God at the same time. And Jesus, in his hypostatic union, had to feel what we feel in order that the scripture would be fulfilled, that he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Are y'all referring me to church? Watch here. The Bible says, and they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. See, in other words, they gave Jesus wine and myrrh that he might forget. Oh, Lord. That he might not feel the pain. Can I, can I, can I, can I put a here? Let me make it personal. Had he taken the wine and the myrrh, he might have forgotten one sin that I committed. And that one sin that was forgotten while he was under anesthesiology could have been the sin that sent me to hell. Y'all better come on, talk to me up in here. Had he gotten to the point, Holly, where he was unaware on the cross, then on the cross, he could have forgotten about uh, the bad stuff that we've done. See, that, 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 so, so, but, but not only that, can I go and work for a minute? See, there was a consensus among the Gnostics that Jesus had swooned away on Calvary. In other words, they're saying that, uh, that Jesus went into a state of comatose. And when he got into the cool tomb, that the cool tomb resuscitated him and he didn't really rise from the dead. So, 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 so Mark and Matthew are very clear. You got to see the power of this text and the writing of this text. They were writing to people who some people thought that Jesus had just swooned away on the cross and that he didn't really die. See, but Mark and Matthew were saying that he didn't take any drugs. Lord have mercy. I was sure with me. Mark and Matthew were saying uh, that he wasn't under anesthesia. Lord have mercy. That he hadn't swooned out uh, to where he had passed out under the anesthesiologist and had forgotten everything uh, and, and then, then all of a sudden woke back up in the tomb. But there are so many holes around that. First of all, Lord have mercy, how the stone got rolled away. You got to see something about the stone was pretty heavy. And the stone, Lord have mercy, covered, uh, yeah, the outside opening. So there was no way for Jesus to turn to get the stone rolled away. Lord have mercy. I I'm going to leave that alone. That's another sermon. Yeah, but watch the text here. <laughs> the Bible says that they gave him. Now this word gave, uh, didomi in the Greek, is in the Greek imperfect which meant that they kept on offering him the anesthesia. Lord have mercy. They kept on, Lord, y'all better come on with me, getting Jesus to sign the consent form to go under the anesthesiology. Y'all pray, come on, y'all talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Jed and Jess told me also that when you get this long form that you're filling out when you go into surgery, that there's a little consent that you got to check out that says, I'm willing to go under. See, they kept coercing Jesus. They kept coercing him 
to sign the content form, the consent form, uh, that he might, mama, go under anesthesiology so that he wouldn't feel the pain. Can I tell you something, church? That consent can bring contempt. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes consenting will bring about contempt. Lord, how I wish I had somebody with me up here. Lord, have mercy. You remember Satan in the, God, in, in the wilderness trying to get Jesus to sign the content for, com, consent form so that Jesus would be in contempt? So that Jesus, Lord have mercy, would not be in the will of his father. In the text here, they kept giving Jesus or kept offering him, yeah, the drug. And Jesus kept refusing it. Now, let, 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 let me put a pin right there and say, when times get hard, church, and we are struggling going through stuff, yeah, Lord, uh, when, when, when you're at the end of your rope, when your psychological state, yeah, has reached the bottom, yeah, yeah, when you can't think straight, when your mind is turning in circles, ruminating, trying to find a resolution to your problem, when you're down, when you're lonely, when you're low, when you're crying, how much coercing does the devil need for you? Lord Jesus, some of us give in. See, had Jesus just been a martyr, he would have given in to the consent and died as a martyr. But Jesus didn't come to die as a martyr. He came to die as a savior. Y'all praying with me, church? They kept on offering. Now, I'm going to be real with you. It wouldn't have taken too much coercing for me. Because you telling me that this gonna make me feel better? You telling me that this will make my mind clearer? You telling me that, that this gonna make my body relaxed? You telling me that this gonna make me forget about all my issues? Uh, and I'm just gonna walk through life feeling good, zippity do that day? I want it. Y'all better come on. Y'all ain't with me yet. Lord have mercy. See, a lot of us, it doesn't take much coercing for us to consent. Y'all ain't got me yet. Yeah, it doesn't take much coercing. All it takes is I'm tired. I've had enough of this. I deserve to feel better. I shouldn't have to go through all this. Why am I struggling the way I'm struggling? You mean you got something that's going to make me feel better? Give it here. We taking it. We taking it. See, they, 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 they kept offering Jesus. See, Courtney was repetitive. They kept offering him. Are y'all with me, church? And he kept refusing. See, just like in, in, in the time of his temptation, he refused the coercing that he would not be in contempt. I wish y'all were with me this morning. See, a lot of us, Lord, how much y'all know what I'm talking about. It doesn't take much convincing to coerce us. Oh, Lord, because we so stuck on ourselves. We don't want to feel this pain. We don't want to go through this. We don't want to face this inevitable. We don't want to face this reality. So what you got to make me feel better? What can I do to make me feel better? Well, I'll go to social media and I'll just air out on social media. That's my coping me mechanism. Y'all ain't got me yet. To, I'll just do what everybody else is doing. I'll accept the coercing. Yeah, but accepting the coercing will end us up in contempt. Are y'all praying with me, church? See, they tried to coerce Jesus. But Jesus refused. The text says he received it not. Do y'all see it in the text? The Bible says that the more they tried to push it on Jesus, the more he refused to take it. And you got to see something here. He was already in the midst of pain. He had already been beaten till his organs were popping out. 
he had already carried a ragged cross up the hill. And so now they have the unmitigated gall to say to him, you want something for the pain. Can I put another pen right there and say that's how the devil does? Lord have mercy. After he didn't beat you up, y'all ain't got me yet. After your family's destroyed, after your bank account is gone, after you lost your job, after you lost your relationship with your children, after he destroyed everything, after you're feeling pain, 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 then Satan comes and say, I got something for you. Oh, Lord Jesus. Somebody better say amen up in here. Y'all with me, church? See, but not only was there the coercing, Holly, but let's look at the concoction. Oh, Lord. Look at the concoction. Look at the cocktail. Oh, Lord, y'all better come on. Because y'all know y'all got some concoctions. You know you got some cocktails. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Look at the concoction here. The concoction was wine and myrrh. Lord, have mercy. Wine was alcoholic that numbed the pain and myrrh was a narcotic. Lord have mercy. It was dope. Lord have mercy. It was a drug. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't even on the level, yeah, of the, uh, of, of the analgesics uh, because the analgesics, one of the highest analgesics that we have, according to Jess and Jeff, is morphine and opiates. These morph morphine and opioids numb, they, take, they, they mess with your mute receptors where the pain is there, but you are impervious and numb to the pain. So the Bible says in this concoction, they wanted Jesus, Lord have mercy, to go to sleep. And they wanted Jesus to not feel the pain at the same time. And see, and, and as I was on the phone with, with Jess and Jess last night, D David, they were shouting because Je Jess said, whoa, Unc, because that's exactly what we do. What we do is that we give an anesthesia along with an analgesic. He says if it's excruciating pain, Jess said uh, that, that what will happen is that we'll take you from where you are unaware of the pain, but we'll also give you morphine to numb the pain at the same time. So they were coming to Jesus, Lord have mercy, with gas, Lord have mercy, and morphine. Oh, Lord. They were coming to Jesus saying that if you put the mask on, Lord have mercy, take the shot of morphine, you won't feel a thing. How could he be touched with the feelings of my infirmities if he didn't feel a thing? How could he feel when you're going through something? How could he, Lord, Jesus, the concoction. I'm trying, I, 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 I got some more. It gets better. The concoction, yeah, this myrrh came from a tree. This tree oozed out sap. And the sap was a yellow, greenish, reddish sap that was very bitter to taste. And from this sap, they made narcotics and perfume. In this case, yeah, the rarest and the purest form of myrrh is a narcotic. If you take the myrrh, you go into what's called a stupefying, yes, yeah, sensory, to where whatever happens again, you won't remember it. Bible says that Jesus didn't take it. Are y'all with me, church? Not only church was there the coercing, not only was there the concoction, but there was also the cognizance of Jesus. Can I tell you something? The Lord want to be cognizant all the time. The Bible says he neither sleeps nor slumbers. Yeah, Lord, he doesn't take a nap on you. The Lord is up all the time. He's cognate all the time. And see, here's the thing. Is that, uh, yeah, Lord, see, had he taken it, B, 
he would have lost cognizance, which means that he would have almost saved me. Come on, somebody. See, this is what he did. He stayed cognizant, Brother Charlie, so that he would not almost save me, but save me to the utmost. See, I don't want an almost salvation. I don't know about you, but I want an utmost salvation. My sin doesn't require almost salvation. Y'all better come on, talk to me. Yeah, yeah, our sin does not require an almost salvation. It requires an utmost salvation. And an utmost salvation requires a cognate God. An utmost salvation requires a God who's going to be walked through the process to make sure that every T is crossed, every I is dotted. Y'all know what I'm trying to say up in there. Yeah, he's going to make sure that every ounce of your sin is saved y'all still with me y'all still with me see you had to be cognizant Mitch he, he couldn't take it it would have been good for him and it's not that G you gotta see something here see Jesus was all wise and there are times when Jesus escaped some situations so it's not like it just didn't, like, like, like Jesus saying, I don't escape. He had escaped some situations out of wisdom. But in this case, he said, I'm not escaping this. That's love, church. That's how much he loved you. That he says, I'm not going to escape this pain. That I'm going to be cognizant through this whole thing. Even though you're coercing me even though I know it would be better for me personally if I were to take this. But if I take it, it would help me personally, but it would hurt the whole world. Can I tell you something about some of the decisions that we make, Lord, in our consenting, that sometimes we consent to stuff that not just only hurt us, but hurt our families, hurt our children. Y'all with me, church? Be careful what you consent to. But Jesus, he stayed woke. Lord have mercy. But Jesus, he didn't fall for the coercing. But Jesus, he didn't consent so that he wouldn't be in contempt. See, that was a cup that was in the garden that Jesus said, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. See, I love Jesus because he was at work. And see, Jesus was, like, y'all know where I'm going, was on the cross working. Yeah, the work of Jesus was on the cross. And y'all know, don't drink at work. Don't drink on, y'all better catch me on the job. I remember back in my days, Lord have mercy. Can I testify for a moment? Lord have mercy. I couldn't go to work unless I was hot. Y'all. I couldn't put up with them folk unless I rolled two or three on the way. And I walked in work happy. So glad to be here. Y'all ain't got me. Because, oh, Lord Jesus up in here. Come on, B. Courtney, where you at? Yeah, y'all, I, I, I need some delivered folk up in here. Yeah, it didn't work for me if I wasn't high on the job. I didn't stay on the job. But Jesus said, I ain't going to be high on the job because I might miss an inventory. I might miss an assignment if I'm high. Somebody look at your neighbor and say designated driver. You see, let me tell you about the designated driver. See, the designated driver, Lord have mercy, he does three things. First of all, he sacrifices while everybody else is drinking. The designated driver doesn't drink. Can I tell you something? 
the designated driver. Sack y'all, Lord have mercy. Why are you drunk? He sober. Why are you in a stupefy? He has control of his mind. The designated driver sacrifice. Why are you having fun? Come on, y'all. See, some of y'all ain't never been the designated driver before. Y'all been on the other side. Lord, so you don't know the pain of the designated driver. Uh, y'all ain't got it yet. To, Lord, have mercy. The designated driver sacrifices. See, Jesus knew that he had to be the designated driver. So he didn't get high. He didn't drink. Can I tell you something else about the designated driver? Not only does he or she sacrifice, but there's also a security issue in this. Now I found out, I did a little research, judge, and you can fact check me and correct me later if I'm wrong. Uh, but I found out uh, that uh, if I'm in the passenger seat, <laughs> drunk as a skunk, Lord have mercy, but the designated driver is totally sober, then the law can't touch me. <laughs> am I right about it? I'm drunk in the car. Y'all better come on with me. I'm high as the Georgia Pine in the car, but my designated driver is free from the law because my designated driver didn't take a drink. Y'all better come on with me. Yeah, Lord, uh, my designated driver refused to get high. When I was high, Lord have mercy. Ooh, Lord. See, Jesus knew that he was our designated driver. Y'all ain't got me yet. Uh, can I tell you something else? But Charlie, I'm in the driver's, in the passenger seat. Drunk is all get out. Y'all better come on with me. Saying to myself and to the driver, I ain't going to do this no more. Anybody up in here? Anybody done been there? And, oh Lord. and while you're there, you're saying, I'm done with this. I ain't smoking this no more. I'm not snorting this anymore. I'm not drinking this anymore. I'm done with all of this. But the designated driver says, it doesn't matter how many times you get drunk. Not only, Lord, have mercy, it gets better. It gets better, church. Not only does the designated drink or not drink, See, Jesus didn't drink in that moment because he knew he was a designated driver. He knew I was drunk. He knew I got drunk in the garden. Lord have mercy. See, I had a friend, I'm not going to call his name, but we were buddies back in high school. i never forget the day my friend came by the house and he had two joints rolled up. Y'all ain't got me yet. I never smoked a, a day in my life. But we've been talking about it. Come on, y'all better come out with me. We'd had conversations about it. I'd lie, say I'd gotten high. <laughs> but that day, when my boy lit it up, I say, give me a hit. And from then, y'all ain't got me. I became addicted to marijuana. I'm still addicted to marijuana. I ain't smoked in years, but I'm still addicted to it. I'm glad it doesn't smell the same way. Because <laughs> if it smelled today the way it used to smell, are y'all with me, church? Let me go on and bring this thing. See, the designated driver doesn't drink. I got drunk in the garden. I took my first hit of sin in the garden. And ever since then, Sean, I've been trying to put it down. 
Oh, Lord. Y'all ain't got me yet. The good that I would do, that I don't do. Every time we want to do good, evil is always there. I've been trying to put it down. I'll go to the altar. I talk to God. Come on, y'all. You talk to God about it. But you're still fighting uh, that sin. You're still battling uh, that demon. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You want to get it right? But just like uh, Jang Lang and his boy <laughs> can't get right. Y'all ain't with me yet. I'm trying to help us out up in here. But thank God that I got a designated driver. And my designated driver, Lord have mercy, he ain't sinning. Lord have mercy. He's free from the prosecutor. Can I tell y'all something? Jesus is not the police. He's not the prosecutor. He's not the one saying you finna go to hell because you're drunk. Drunk with sin. Yeah, yeah, he's your designated driver to sacrifice with no sin. The Bible says uh, that he was tempted just like us, yet with no sin. In other words, uh, the proverbial friend of mine put the weed in front of him, but he didn't accept it. See, Satan, uh, oh, Lord, uh, is putting stuff in front of you. But Jesus is saying, I'm here to protect you from the law. You just sit right here. Stay drunk. I ain't drinking. I refuse to drink. I'm here to protect you from the law. See, the law can't touch you as long as you're in my car. Yeah, you can be drunk, <laughs> Lord have mercy. And so we used to say, Holly, drunk as Cooter Brown. Y'all don't know nothing about that. But still, the law can't touch you. Because you know why? I did my research, Judge. As long as my hand is not on the steering wheel, <laughs> the law can't touch me. Can I tell y'all something, Mom? Yeah, if you're in the car drunk, get your hands off the steering wheel. Let your DD get you home. Let your designated driver watch it here. I kind of jumped ahead uh, and said, sacrifice security. But the last thing, Lord have mercy, that the designated driver does, you already heard it, uh, he gets you home safely. I should have shouted you right there. Yeah. He going to get you home without you killing yourself. He's going to get you home without you killing somebody else. Your designated driver will get you home safe. Oh, Lord. I was sinking deep down in sin. Lord, y'all ain't got me up in here. I was at the bar drunk. Lord have mercy. But I made a phone call. I called my friend. And his name is Jesus. And I said, Jesus, I can't drive no more. That my life is out of control. I said, Jesus, I can't take the stern wheel no more. Because... If I start driving, I'm dead. And not only that, uh, I will hurt my family, hurt my loved ones. And Jesus said, hold on, boy. I'm on my way to pick you up. Oh, Lonnie, uh, anybody ever made that phone call to the Lord and say Lord I'm ready to throw in the towel Lord 
I'm drunk uh, with the sins uh, of the world. Lord, uh, the law is about to condemn me uh, because uh, I'm driving my life uh, impaired. Uh, Lord, uh, I'm driving uh, my life uh, full of uh, the narcotics of the world. And Jesus said, hold on, daughter. I'm on my way to pick you up. And he all right. And uh, this is what uh, I love about the Lord. He didn't uh, tell me uh, to walk out of the bar. Lord have mercy. He didn't blow the horn saying, uh, I'm out here. He didn't shoot me a text and say it's here. Lord have mercy. He came in and found me in my state. And uh, when the police pulled us over, he said, I have no sin. Woo-hoo. I haven't uh, broken uh, the law. And then the police say, well, what about your passenger? My passenger is full of sin. But uh, my passenger is riding in my car. And because she's riding in my car, you can't touch her. Yeah, Lord, ain't no niece of you doing this with her. Ain't no niece of to have to walk the line. No need to put it out your blowing machine. Cause my passenger is riding with me. Isn't it good to know that we got a designated driver? And uh, he said, I don't want anything to drink because I got to drive B home. I don't want to anything to drink. Uh, Sister Perkins gotta get home. Uh, and he all right. Uh, Sister Pickens gotta make it to the house. Uh, and uh, I'm so glad. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that Jesus, uh, Lord have mercy, uh, didn't drink uh, the booze. Uh, didn't take uh, the narcotic uh, so that uh, he could uh, get me home. Uh, Ain't he all right? You see, where do you live, preacher? Oh, Lord, it's not a local address. I'm not trying to get to my house. I'm not trying to get to the church. I am not trying to get somewhere else. But heaven is my home. My determination uh, is for heaven. Uh, I have no other desires uh, but to make heaven uh, my home. Uh, I got a mansion uh, up in heaven. Uh, I got a home uh, up in heaven. Uh, but I can't get there drunk uh, if I'm trying uh, to get there on my own. Uh, the law will arrest me. Uh, and I find myself up in hell. But thank God that I got a driver. Thank God. And his name is Jesus. My rock in a world. My shelter in a time of storm. My all and all. Anybody know Jesus? Can I tell you something? If you're drunk, get in the car. You remember the Terminator. If you want to live, come with me. Jesus saying, if you want to live, come with him. And he all right. While he was on the cross, he was awake. He couldn't swoon. He had to be aware the pain he had to feel. He had to feel your crying. He had to feel your loneliness. 
He had to feel your abandonment. He had to feel your confusion. He had to feel all of that. So he said, I'm going to stay awake so I can drive you home, so I can get you to glory, so I can get you to the pearly gates, so I can get you to the streets of pay with gold, so I can get you to the throne of God, so you can worship all day. But the Lord said, I love you so much that I'm going to stay awake and I'm going to die. I'm a die knowing that I'm dying. I'm a die knowing that I love you. Somebody said he died. He died. He died. He died. He died on Calvary's cross. Ain't he all right? See, the reality is the cross was close to the ground and his feet were only about a foot from the ground so people could hear him talking from the cross and did you hear him say from the cross forgive them forgive them forgive them for they know not what they do had he been drunk had he been stupefied he wouldn't have been saying forgive them he's been ready to fight them but he said forgive them for they know not what they do he died he died he died on the cross didn't he die he didn't swoon away he didn't take anesthesia he didn't take analgesics he died feeling my pain he died crying your tears he died suffering your suffering say yeah say yes say yeah say yes he died he died but then when he went to hell he still had no charges and hell couldn't keep him and not only that those that had gotten arrested and that had put in jail he said I'm about to set you free he set the captives free and on the third day oh, on the third day he got up from the grave because he had no sin with all power with all power with all power and he all right your designated driver is driving you when you can't find your way when you're getting lost because you're impaired by the sins of the world hold on look to your left look to your right look all around you you got a driver that's getting you home safely. Don't worry about it. You might slip and fall. You might make mistakes. You might fall every now and then. But you got a driver, and his name is Jesus. He'll get you home. Don't worry. Don't worry. Say yeah. Say yes. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Uh-huh. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Every now and then, I go back to try to kick the dog that bit me. Y'all ought to know what I'm talking about. Every now and then, you go back to that sin and say, I got it this time. But thank God that your driver come to the bar of your sin and pick you up. This is what I love about it. He doesn't ask you what you didn't take. He didn't ask you what you drank. He didn't ask you. He doesn't judge you. He doesn't criticize you. He didn't say, I told you not to do it. He just said, come on. I love you. Come on. You're all right with me. Come on, somebody. I remember the first time and the only time I ever got drunk in my life. I was about 17 years old trying to drink with my big cousins. Got drunk where I didn't know who I was. But my daddy came pick me up. My daddy didn't judge me. He came pick me up, Field. I was with Jerry. You got me, Field. Trying to drink wild turkey 101. 
got drunk. My daddy can't pick me up. At the club, I didn't ask a question. Just put me in the car, took me home, put me in a cold tub, took care of me. And what he did, make me go to school the next day. Y'all ain't got me, church, but he loved me enough uh, to not leave me drunk. Uh, he loved me enough uh, to not make me make a fool of myself. Uh, the Lord love you. Uh, that even though uh, you might try to make a fool of yourself, he'll hide you. Uh, he'll cover you. Uh. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Somebody say yes yeah, in here. Give the Lord a praise, church. Give the Lord a praise. Your designated driver. Your designated driver. He didn't take the narcotic. Come on, somebody. Come on, I told you it gets better, church. He didn't drink. Because he knew he had to get you home. He had to stay sober. Because he had to get you home. He couldn't get you home. If he was drunk with sin also. But he had to get you home. Come on. Give the Lord a praise, church. He's worthy of us. Thank you, God. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest through the Bible with all of us now, henceforth and forevermore. Every heart say amen. Amen. And thank God. Come on, give the Lord a praise. You can ask